Are we in there? We're recording. Anthony Adams, Tony Adams. It rings a bell, but. All right, Spice Adams. Spice Adams, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they call him an American television host, actor and comedian now. He's known more for that. He played, uh, blah, 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 blah. He was uh, originally drafted by the 49ers in the second round of the 2003 NFL Draft. Then he played for the Bears. He finished with the Bears. He played with them for 2007 to 2011. So I'm surprised you don't know who Spice Adams is. But anyway, we shot something here with him. I'm going to reach out and see when that's supposed to be happening. It's uh, They're originally trying to, I forget what they were trying to put it on, but it was really cool. It was a cool little uh, segment or program or I'm going to say an episode mm -hmm. or some sort of series or something they had planned. It was uh -huh. myself, Spice, Chase Gosling, Matt Vine, and uh, an awesome little production crew. Great guys. If we had the funds, I would love to have those guys to work with yeah. to uh, tape television. All right, Spice the date. Spice Adams, good name. He's a good guy. <laughs> you should be following him on, uh, well, I follow him on Insta. You hit him up on Insta? I hit him up on Insta. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I have an Insta. All right, so what we're going to be talking about on Patreon when we're done with uh, the teaser is we're going to talk about as much as we can El Buffalo Bison, Bison, Smith. Bison Smith Mark Bison Smith Japanese fans you know who Mark Bison Smith is Puerto Rican wrestling fans you know who El Buffalo Bison Smith is some Ring of Honor fans will know who Bison Smith was Fans of today, younger fans, if you don't know who Bison Smith was, you're going to want to know because this guy was about as believable as they come. But that's what we're going to do. I lived with him for a stint and worked with him in Puerto Rico. Casey James worked with him, worked with him in the ring in Puerto Rico, lived with him in IE. The first thing I want to talk about is I'm, I'm setting the timer now. I just had a, what I believe to be a groundbreaking idea marketing and I forget when I listen to the teaser or our podcast I swear so much I don't even realize it it's such a habit like can I shake it or not I don't know anymore the reason for that is, is I'm not in situations oh I can't answer that uh, I'm in I'm not in any situations where I can't swear right so, <laughs> you know? yeah I know, you know? Uh... and I think about <laughs> all the things I've done and situations that I've done and I am actually very creative very smart marketing genius uh, come up with some outstanding and unbelievable ideas and when my emotional sobriety which you know what that means Casey mm -hmm. is is on par ideas are a dime a dozen I've had tons and tons of magnificent ideas stolen since you've known me how many ideas Big money ideas oh, have you sure, seen yeah, stolen? Yeah, no, I mean mine that are stolen. Yeah, no, uh, uh, probably a handful. I mean, that's unfortunately, I, what is that, the most sincere form of flattery <laughs> is to rip people off. But it happens, especially in this industry. Yeah, well, especially. Well, I say, show me the money. I but know, anyway, I know. But it's I okay. Know. When I get stressed out or angry, which uh, I'm very prone to anger, you know, uh, well, at the end of the day, when, like I say, when my emotional sobriety is straight, ideas are a dime a dozen. I cuss too. Here's the thing, when you're under the gun, you don't have the time to articulate yourself in a normal fashion. It's usually, F this, dude, because we don't have yeah. time for a conversation. It needs to be, and then that's when the swearing happens. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've got to do, try to do now in the teaser anyway, because when I see, like, Conan is, uh, eloquent when it comes to swears but they beep him out on their teaser with disco oh, okay. so there's got to be a reason maybe uh i wouldn't be surprised if youtube hides you to more f-bombs or you know maybe so you know we'll get more raw when you go to patreon where we can get away with yeah. it so the idea of the day and this is the big one um uh, did you know, what do you know about pro wrestling tees? What was your first interaction with pro, or not your first interaction, your first understanding of pro wrestling tees? I think the first time I, well, my buddy 
Cliff Compton, who worked as Domino mm -hmm. in WWE, mm -hmm. he used them. This must have been probably in the late 2000s. Also, Colt Cabana, I think, used them too. Yeah. And I think that was probably my first exposure to them was through those two individuals. So the, the, the funny thing to me is now, and you're talk, you, a guy talking to you here is the guy that gave uh, Cabana his first match, set of matches. Uh, I always liked Colton, you know? Yeah. So... That being said, I'm driving in the city and Cabin. I look up, and there he is on a on a on a on a billboard. I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Whole cabin. Huh? Yeah. So a couple of things I liked about pro wrestling Tease's initial business model as an observer with the former business brain. Again, in from from let me think here from 1992 till 2000 I ran a business that did on the average of two and a half million dollars of revenue in a year you know for that many years so I had a clue so as a as a wrestler Bob Ohm, it was you know hey there's an uh, indie guy uh, as somebody who's personally invested in the kid hey wow that's pretty cool Colts uh, on a billboard haha business standpoint not many people know who the hell he is then and even fewer know him now when you look at the grand scheme when he's on a billboard next to uh who you know one of the chicago bears that's on uh, a hair club ad <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean brian urlacher brian urlacher with yeah his, with his hair <laughs> hey, you just have yeah that. i know i know it deserves <laughs> it he used to look like a mean football player now he looks like a fifth grade school teacher so yeah looks so, so weird back to what i was saying like Urlacher's when, hair. here here's uh <laughs> urlacher's on my left and cole caban is on my right <laughs> you know, like a school uh, count. So, so who are more people driving by every day going to know who? He's getting the rub from her lockers. Here. Come on, man. Don't take <laughs> away from the point. The point is this. That's not their targeted market. Their targeted market is edgy, underground. Right. Yeah. That's the market pro wrestling tees had, and that was their clientele. Mm -hmm. So that was brilliant. So it's always said that underground edgy kind of feel to it yeah. that will always have some sort of market to it obviously because pro wrestling tees is doing outstanding business ben, but oh, go ahead. but uh much and, and i'm going to go ahead and attribute that to what put a uh, ecw on the map was that underground sure. anti-establishment business model which is great yeah. now what were you going to say I was just going to say, back into the uh, thread of ripped off ideas, talk about a guy that didn't get the payday that all these other guys are getting. Colt was probably the first guy to have a, a pro wrestling podcast. Oh, yeah. And everybody, now everybody's making a, you know making money off of it. Yeah. He, but he was really the okay. pioneer. Off topic. Of so when we talk about Colt, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, but remind me or write it sure, down in your sure. notebook. Because, he's the pioneer of the. Yeah, he's a good kid. And we should talk about him because he's prominent to that niche, you know. That niche that we're trying to tap into too at this point we're trying to tap into all niches but anyway we have direct lineage so the idea is this what we should be doing is and anyway back to that edginess and all that stuff an independent wrestler they all want their shirts today on pro wrestling tees they all want them on there some guys save up money and spend a mint spend more than they'll ever make to get a little shop on pro wrestling tees, print ups, uh, so they don't have to print up shirts, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But they never sell them. Our guys, when we first got a relationship with pro wrestling tees, they were like, well, you have to have this many Facebook followers, suggested this many Twitter followers. It was right before Twitter blew up and became the marketing crown jewel. Right. And I was like, well, uh, uh, what are we, a 5,000 Facebook? Okay. What do we have on YouTube? Sell them on the YouTube traffic. Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys are way out in front. That's great. So our guys, all our guys, first get their T-shirts up on there, and they don't pimp them. They just wanted them in the shop. But they're too embarrassed to share their own shirts. It's just like they just want a job. Yeah. So it's just mind-blowing to me. But, you know, the way that this goes is the way that Vince set things up. When you guys buy one of our wrestler shirts... One of someone on our talent roster shirts, let's go to Pro Wrestling Tees and you'll see who's all on there. Uh, they get a percentage. They split 50% of the profit with the company, which is a pretty damn good deal. It's more than Vince gives per t shirt. You know what I mean? And I like working with Pro Wrestling Tees because I've never seen a complaint from uh, a, a customer. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. And even when we talk to them, they get back to you. I don't care what holiday weekend it is, they get back yeah. to you. 
You know, so I, I appreciate that. But one thing I don't like, but anyway, back to this. So here is, uh, and, and, and the other thing is I think that they also kind of look at the type of person they're in bed with uh, when they do something business-wise, which is cool. Mm. That's a good business model because I'm the same way. However, they give this little company, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm glad I don't remember the name of it, a Chicago company, um, that uh, they're good kids, but they're the shits. But because they have a little pro wrestling tea rub, they get a little bit of the pro wrestling tea attendance and or traffic, i.e. It's really not that good at wrestling. You know, decent kids, the, the, the one in particular, but he's, he's not a good worker. He was never fully trained and, you know, uh, uh, you and I are fans of this industry. We'll always be fans of this industry. Uh, your most haggard veteran today, and probably the oldest living haggard veteran today in pro wrestling is Jerry the King Lawler. He'll always be a fan of this industry. But these independent guys, like the one I spoke about, they don't have a respect for the industry that you and I had, right. or for the forefather. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a shame. Because even though they're a decent person, they wouldn't go out there and try to sell themselves as professional wrestlers without, uh, 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 with the lack of tools that they have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, and it's still, it's, there's no money being made and, and, and whatever. I mean, people, of course, have the right to what, uh, uh, support whatever. But at sure. the end of the day, the support indie wrestling started out as defend indie wrestling. And I used to make jokes. I'm like, defend it from what? <laughs> God hates shitty wrestling. Yeah. Even the Lord hates shitty wrestling. Defend indie wrestling. Oh, then they switched it because they realized how stupid it was. That <laughs> stupid, you know. Hey, man, we are tards. But anyway, um, have I sworn yet? No, I don't I'm think doing so. a good job. The idea is this. So there are so many fans out there in the internet wrestling community as well. Internet wrestling community, I think that this really, really plays to, they support pro wrestling tees. Mm -hmm. They get uh, all kinds of stuff from pro wrestling tees, and mostly the ones I see around in the strangest places are anything AEW, you know? So what I'm gonna do, and the reason I'm talking about it to you now, and I'm talking about it here, is because if I were to talk about it with my partner, quote unquote, uh, right away would be shot down when there'd be negativity and crap around it. Uh, what I want to do is this, I want to do, I guess for lack of a better term right now, we'll go ahead and call it contest or contests. What that would be is this, you have fans, the fans, fans make shirt designs. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, then you have your fans and your talent roster vote on the shirt designs. Now, I'm not saying that you win the contest and you get the blue ribbon. Give the fan a portion of the shirt sale. Sure. See what I'm saying? So, a lot of people that can't do wrestling, that are huge fans, that have creative and good ideas, I get a lot of those. And I usually get mad at them, but I don't get mad anymore because I realize, you know, the frustration. And this isn't when I broke in in 1988 anymore. I realize that they'll hit me up and be like, I gotta find a way in, I got great ideas. I can't physically wrestle, I don't have a good voice, I can't commentate, but I have great ideas, great ideas, great ideas. And I'm like, man, you, you can't, even to this day, to implement your great ideas or sell them to anyone, you have to get involved with a wrestling company at some point. Well, this gives people like that the chance to go ahead and show their creativity. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that uh, do and, and mess with software to make art, graphic art. You know? What does that do? Well, that actually gets fans that aren't necessarily aware of PPW yet. They make us, we'll make them aware of PPW. And to make these designs, they're going to go and watch our stuff on YouTube. They may subscribe to certain stuff. And as we're going to get a certain percentage of people that are gonna help build our following. So in a sense, this idea is kind of strategic partnering up with fans. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So, now, me saying this now on November 23rd today is? Okay, yep. I gotta finish up. November 23rd, 2021, an idea like this takes time to build up, especially on the internet, but once it does, it'll take off. And somebody's going to steal it and somebody's gonna make <laughs> more money than we are with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think anybody is actually going to dip in and connect with their fan and actually give them money for their idea. 
Yeah. You know? Now, the other thing I want to say in closing on this, fans, that uh, once we get this out there, um, here's something to think about, too. For your resume, so to speak, you've already got something out there. I've got designs featured on pro wrestling tees. That's something World Wrestling Entertainment will look at as a positive because there's still one of the top three revenue streams for World Wrestling Entertainment is WWE Shop, which is WWE t-shirts. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So there's no work, there's no scam, there's no working of the fans in this thing. But I want to do something with this, get it out there, and that's what I want to uh, wanted to say on this thing, because what better place to do it than on the teaser. Now, in regards to our Patreon and stories that you can't get anywhere else, because I can't even think of one podcast that's out there now that knows much about Mark Bison Smith. Right. Um, who, uh, by the way, Mark Bison Smith, who the the, the, cr- the crowning achievement from for for Bison was that uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling was number one when he died. Noah Pro Wrestling in Japan was number two. Uh, there were five people that retired, died or were injured and couldn't come back, which no one ever came back. point I'm trying to make is if you take ROH's top five guys, NXT's top five guys, AEW's top five guys, World Wrestling Entertainment's top five guys, if it was a five-legged chair or stool, Bison was one of those. And the impact of his death, you know, harmed Noah, pro wrestling Noah in Japan till this day. So now we're going to go ahead and cut here and go on with the podcast.